Hello everybody, today I have the finished Kelpie figure, and uh, overall I think it looks pretty good. This was originally supposed to be a uh, gift for a buddy of mine's daughter. Um, of course, I think I went a little too far into the speculative evolution part and made it too uh, different from a horse to the point to where I'm pretty certain they wouldn't like it. So instead, I will be keeping this beast and trying again with a different thing. Which is fine might be, because uh, honestly, I rather like the way it turned out. So uh, to get a uh, closer look up here, you got the, uh, the eye, you got the ear. Show you the other side of the ear, it's a little... A little inconsistent, but that's okay for the most part. I ain't, I ain't fretting over it. Got a scar on the side of his face. You got a more clean and open wound. Got the mouth with the saber teeth, which I will explain in a bit. Got the nostrils. Got the whiskers. Now, this is the first animal of mine to have actually good whiskers. I mean, I attempted whiskers on the uh, palace cat, for anybody that remembers that one. Which I don't blame you, it's not really all that great a one. That one was supposed to be a gift too, but I didn't really think the person I made it for deserved it at the end of the day, and I didn't give it. So, hey, what you gonna do, you know? It turns out I was right. Anyway, um, so yeah, this is the, uh, got some of the patterns on the side here. Now, I pretty much just went for more realistic patterns, you know? This animal is semi-aquatic, so I figured I'd give it sort of a counter shade with uh, the lighter colors underneath the body and then uh, the more darker tones underneath or on top. My bad. Kind of flailing it around. Hold on a second. Let me reposition my camera here. That should be good. Yep. Okay. I got to be careful because there's an object right here that still has fresh... Uh, caulk on it, so I gotta make sure not to set this down on there. So, uh, as you can see, these fresh wounds are uh, present on various parts of the body. I wanted to make it look like this a specific individual got into a fight, uh, possibly with another one of its kind, a horse or whatever animal it managed to come across that would give it some decent damage. And the cut along its neck is a old scar, possibly from some sort of blade. Uh, I am really unsure. It is a female. Uh, I figure the males of the species would have larger manes. Uh, and I figured I'd go with the female because it's been a while since I've made a female creature. And I figure I'd switch it up here and there. Uh, as you can see, it has the genitalia and all that, uh, you know, the uh, mammary, <coughs> mammary, mammary, there we go, mammary glands down there. Uh, but yeah, I think it turned out pretty well. How I did this sort of effect with the colic was I would use this brand. I'd use this brand here and I would simply add some and then yank it away quick and it would make long strands. And I did that over and over again until I got sort of this wavy length on its tail. Now I did the same thing for the mane. As for how I did the whiskers, I would take regular fishing line. Uh, which I have some on hand. I would take some of this fishing line here uh, where it's long and I'd snap it down with either the an exacto knife or a pair of scissors and then I would use some E6000 uh, on the face or I'd apply some E6000 onto the lips and just kind of stick it there and uh, you know paint the whiskers when I was done and that's how I got whiskers. And honestly, I think they look rather decent. I'm going to have to keep this format with uh, other mammals that I'm going to be making. Because uh, I think it worked out pretty damn well. Like uh, the Xenosmilus I got coming up, a species of saber tooth. That'll, that'll, be, that'll definitely be useful for, um, for that animal. So honestly, yeah, I mean, I don't really, don't really know what else to go on to. I mean, it got these... Uh, like I said, it got like kind of the markings around the body. Just give it, just give you something to look at. Um, and then of course, you know, it got like a 
markings around the eye. The eye was done in that uh, sort of glow-in-the-dark uh, clear paint. And then I did the, the brown iris with the black pupil. Then I did the teeth in sort of a um, kind of yellowy-white. And then, of course, the f different various flesh tones from the mouth, the nostrils, the inside of the ears, uh, and various, you know, areas. Uh, you know, you got the tail running down there. And yes, I added all the uh, anatomical uh, details. If you could see it. Oh, I shouldn't be focusing on an animal's asshole this long. Come on. There we go. It, it's there. Trust me. It, I put it, I put it there. I hook my animals up. <laughs> I ain't like those weird ass companies where they make a male animal and add all the junk underneath, but then have to make a female of the same species, they put nothing there. What's up with that? Shit. If you're gonna make wieners, why not? You know, if you can build a pole, then why can't you dig a hole? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I guess to put it in one way or another. Either way. As for the biology part of the video, for those who care about that, uh, stick around. And who, for those who don't want to know what this animal is and what its origins are, uh, you could leave. I ain't gonna, it don't hurt my feelings none. So, pretty much, the Kelpie is a Mizanakid, an ancient lineage of hoofed predators that are in the undulant family. So, pretty much like cows, horses, etc., etc., animals with hooves. Um... More towards the sheep and goats side of things. So different from the entelodonts and the hippos and whales. Those those are a different clade of uh, hoofed predators. Counting the, you know, the entelodonts and androsarcus. Those are a different, separate lineage of hoofed predators. While the mazonicids were on a different uh, lineage. But like I said, this is a this is a mesonicid and not related to intelligence. Uh Its ancestors were rather small, almost uh, I'd say almost dog-like, but instead of having claws, having hoofed toes, which you could see over time evolved into a more modern shape with the large front hooves on the front taking over, while the smaller toes, one of which completely disappearing, uh, kind of transitioned to the back of the foot. So from that point on, uh, this came from a early semi-aquatic ancestor, uh, one of many mesonicids that started to evolve towards the water. Uh, of course, the ancestor of this animal was more, I guess, akin to maybe you could say probably an elongated stoat, almost like with a stoat with maybe elongated legs, although it's hard to say what that looked like in the flesh. Uh, anyways, uh, the ancestral Kelpie, uh, of which I don't really know the specific species, eventually migrated down uh, through from Asia down to North America, and over time eventually spread out. It managed to overcome the competition that overtook many of the other hoofed predators by mostly sticking to the coasts, adapting... <clears throat> sorry... Adapting almost a sort of mammalian sandpiper type niche where we would comb the coasts and, you know, hunt for shellfish and carcasses, uh, hunting birds' eggs as well. Over time, these animals got larger when they started to stride out more and more uh, into the waves. Pretty much uh, when they started going out and physically looking for more different sorts of foods, they got larger. Uh, to accommodate the new food sources, fish, uh, aquatic mammals, seals being one of the bigger options. This was around 10 million years ago, during the end of the Miocene and the beginning of the Pliocene. It's a species around the size of a wolf that eventually, you know, made it more towards in inland and migrated towards what is now England. From that point on, Sorry, don't don't mind the barking in the background. That's the neighbor's dogs. They never stop. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Uh, migrating into what is now England. So, at that point, uh, 
fast forward about say seven to eight million years um roughly maybe around uh the pliocene yeah the the near the late pliocene um these animals managed to island hop to various regions uh south america where they eventually went extinct uh due to competition with uh various what is it various aquatic sporacidonts and uh you know, the forest rackets, which also prevented them from moving further inland. And then, pretty much, they uh, were out-competed for the most part everywhere else. Except in an area known, or as a, <clears throat> sorry, in an area that is now Scotland. Uh, eventually, they were able to colonize that area in decent population numbers. Uh, again, sticking to the coast as their ancestors used to. And they would have eventually uh, been driven out by the cold during the Ice Age, uh, driven further and further south. Once the Ice Age ended, and they managed the climate managed to warm up at around eight, eight to seven thousand years ago, I'd say, they managed to migrate fully into Scotland uh, via ocean, swimming, and eventually moving further inland, where the current ancestor. Uh, the Kelpie, or sorry, the current uh, form, the Kelpie, would then evolve rapidly, becoming a giant, with bulls wearing a metric ton and, and females being around half that weight. Around a thousand pounds. So if this is a ma if this is a female to the ground at the shoulder, this would be a male. A lot longer of a mane, um, uh, with a tail that is ironically shorter only by, say, this much. It's possible that the uh, female Kelpies have a longer tail to help communicate with each other. However, they are mostly solitary, uh, preferring to stake out their own territories with occasional mothers and sisters uh, joining up in small, I guess you could say, what's the word for female bachelor herd? What's a, I guess a coalition almost. Almost like a matriarch type herd. Not really a herd, but you know, they would gather around at night and then spend the days hunting. Their hunting style being almost similar to crocodiles, where they would spread out using the wide placed, or sorry, the, uh, <clears throat> the orbits on the head that have been placed up higher along with their nostrils, almost appearing or almost being able to breathe and look at the same time at the water's edge. Closing in shorter and shorter, typically hunting large other undulants like cattle, horses, etc. And pretty much taking a massive bite out of them, using their saber teeth to inflict as much damage as possible before retreating and waiting for their prey to bleed to death. Due to their uh, rather heavy muscle density, they're able to walk on the bottom of rivers like hippos and make a small kind of, or sorry, make a low rumbling noise while underwater. Possibly infrasound, which helps them map out their area and also to long distance communicate with more of their kind. It didn't take long before the inhabitants of Scotland eventually started to revere these animals. Some praising their incredible strength and ferocity while others despising them, seeing them as devils. Over time, they would eventually uh, lean towards the latter rather than the former and start to <clears throat> start to hunt them. Over time, their population dwindling and dwindling to the point to where they are now, in modern times, critically endangered with only 400 individuals left. Of course, in modern times, people taking the creatures more as a evolutionary marvel have strived to make conservation efforts to keep these beasts alive. However, uh, breeding in captivity is mostly unsuccessful. And that's, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. As for how long it takes for them to gestate, I'd say about seven to eight months. Uh, the offspring stay with the mother for about a year and a half. Uh, their lifespan is... 
roughly 30 to 40 years. And they, um, the Bulls, yeah, I guess you could say Bulls, although stallion and mare is more of a term used for the species. A full-grown bull stallion, uh, which usually dominates the area, will commit infanticide. So the females do have to be careful to protect their offspring. Uh, they are technically mostly carnivorous, but they will eat water plants when other food sources are scarce. So yeah, that's uh, right. One more thing about the anatomy is that they have webbing in between their hoofed toes. Figure I'd make that more apparent before I, uh, you know, before I moved on. But yeah, that's uh, it's pretty much everything out of the ordinary that I could think of. You know, uh, the Irish people that lived back in the day had a special name for this animal, which roughly translated to devil horse, due to the fact that it's um. You know, it does have a rather horseish appearance. Although anybody that is, you know, well trained in the sorts could easily spot the difference. Albeit when these beasts are hunting, they often have most of their bodies submerged, and the parts that are showing do look rather horseish. <laughs> now there is an old story of a woman and her pet horse managing to beat one of these beasts. A recording of sorts. It began in Scotland, somewhere in the 1800s, possibly 1850, where a daughter talked to her mother and told her that she was going to down to the lake. Her mother warned her about that part of the <clears throat> about that part of the lake, saying that it was unsafe. The daughter that had been there multiple times with her horse beforehand did not see the problem. With her mother promising her to not be there, <clears throat> sorry, with her mother having her promise that she wouldn't go there, uh, the daughter went there in secret anyway with her horse. They were laying around in the water, playing around, and while the horse was laying up on the bank, and then pretty much they looked over and saw this odd horse in the distance covered in algae laying there. Little did the girl know that the algae was covering up various pieces that would make the animal more recognizable. She had been told stories of monsters in the lake, but to her, this didn't seem like much of a monster. It was there, it was sitting there, looking at them. Not really all that aggressive. She went over to it, what she presumed was just a weird horse, and noticed that its eyes were more faced forward, like a predator. Or my, well, I guess she wouldn't have realized that it was more like a predator, more like a dog or a person. She said, huh, maybe that's why these people left their horse out. Because it had a weird deform, <clears throat> it had a weird deformity. Then she realized that it also had long hairs on the end of its snout, akin to the whiskers of a seal she seen one time. She said, "That's odd. I haven't been told. I haven't seen that before." She started to pet it and eventually got to its mane. The creature, curious of her, sniffing her the whole time with wide eyes, due to the fact that apparently it had been unfamiliar with humans. Eventually, she started petting the mane, and her hand ended up getting snared in the animal's long, almost sticky-like hair. Eventually, getting entangled, the <clears throat> sorry, the long, the odd horse, being kind of paranoid at this point of this creature that is unfamiliar of it touching it, and the fact that it was now yanking on part of its hair, panicked, biting the woman on her arm and dragging her further into the water. The predatory instinct had kicked in. At this point, uh, the owner's horse, the girl, the girl's horse, ended up realizing what was going on. It ran into the water after her and pretty much bit off the chunks of hair that were attaching her arm to the uh, odd horse's mane. Sorry. And from this point on, a fight broke out with the girl's horse grabbing her by the jacket and throwing her onto the bank, causing her to become unconscious from a rough fall. After that, the pet horse and the odd horse, per se, started to duel. 
getting up on each other's hind legs, biting and kicking. The screams can be heard for a mile. With eventually the pet horse coming out on top, kicking the odd horse in the face repeatedly until it retreated. Eventually sinking, <clears throat> eventually sinking deep into the waters. The pet horse, with the last amount of strength that it had, eventually managed to grab its owner by the jacket and dragged it, or <clears throat> dragged its companion back to the cabin where her mother had been waiting. Now being near nightfall, with the pet horse collapsing from its wounds, eventually the daughter woke up in her bed and noticed that her arm had a fracture both from the odd creature that she encountered biting it and the fact that she was thrown so violently. At that point, she asked what happened to her horse, and the mother went out and saw that despite the various injuries, it seemed to have at least made it back, and from her knowledge, it was going to make it. Of course, with that, she said, Thank God, I was worried. I encountered this odd horse that was in the lake laying there. And she recounted the details to her mother about the odd features that it had. And her mother gasped in fear. She said, honey, that wasn't a horse. That was a Kelpie. An ancient river demon that drags people away into the depths never to be seen again. Your horse was lucky. They usually don't win the fight. And then, of course, her mother smacked her on the top of the head and told her that's why you always listen. The end. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it on the, uh, the Kelpie's uh, profile. Uh, I hope all of you enjoyed it, and I hope you didn't mind the stuttering too much, you know. Sometimes it's hard for me to collect my thoughts, even when I really goddamn need it. But anyways, uh, hope all of you take care, and, uh, I hope all of you also have a good day, or night in my case. Anyways, take it easy.